Okay, so this video is going to be an overview of cellular respiration. If you're looking for a more detailed explanation of the process, if you read below in the description box, there will be a link to a more detailed video that I've already created. So let's go ahead and discuss an overview of cellular respiration. Okay, so cellular respiration, you know, what is it? Well, ultimately, it's a cellular process that ends up producing this molecule right here, adenosine triphosphate, abbreviated ATP. This is a molecule that, that provides your cells with the energy that they need to do work. So understanding how cells make their energy is actually a really important concept in biology. One thing to mention of cellular respiration is that it's an exothermic chemical reaction. It's one that releases energy. And if we look at the formula for cellular respiration, a molecule of glucose, C6H12O6, plus oxygen will yield six molecules of water, some carbon dioxide, and energy. Because energy is in the, you know, the left of the arrow are the reactants, and the right of the, rear of the arrow are the products. Because energy is listed as a product, energy has been released in this chemical reaction, uh, hence a exothermic reaction. And for the record, the, the energy that we are referring to are molecules of ATP. ATP is the energy that is released during cellular respiration. So let's go into this in a little more detail. Okay, so who performs cellular respiration? Well, that would be all eukaryotic cells because eukaryotic cells possess mitochondria. And so for eukaryotic organisms, we're talking about members of kingdom protista, like this amoeba right here. We're talking members of kingdom fungi, like uh, this mushroom, members of kingdom plantae, the plants, and members of kingdom animalia, the animals. So organisms that are eukaryotic perform cellular respiration. And so where does cellular respiration occur? Well, we know it occurs in eukaryotic cells, but more specifically within the mitochondria, mostly within the mitochondria of eukaryotic cells. And so what happens during cellular respiration? Well, food molecules such as glucose are used to create ATP. So here we have a, a young lady eating a meal. And if we zoom on into her bloodstream, after we eat a meal, the G stands for glucose. After we eat a meal, glucose is absorbed into our bloodstream. So after a meal, we have a high concentration of glucose within our bloodstream. And through simple diffusion, you can see there's a low concentration of glucose in the two cells to the left of the, of the vein. So glucose will diffuse into the cells particularly then into the mitochondria, and the mitochondria will start to produce a large amount of ATP. And we're gonna get into this process of how the mitochondria produces a large amount of ATP as we continue through the rest of this video. Okay, you know, it's worth mentioning that, you know, for every single molecule of glucose, you know, here's one molecule of glucose, C6H12O6 glucose. The, uh, through cellular respiration, 36 molecules of ATP can be produced. That's a pretty good investment. You know, if you can turn one molecule of glucose into 36 molecules of ATP. Well, it's even more when we look at triglycerides. You know, here's a, here's a lipid with three fatty acids attached to it. That's why it's a, a triglyceride here. And triglycerides, a single triglyceride can produce up to 146 ATPs. And this is generally where we get ATP from, from carbohydrates such as glucose and from our, the lipids that we consume, the triglycerides that we consume in our diet. Well, you know, let's actually get into an overview now of cellular respiration. We can kind of divide it into three stages. Stage one, step one, glycolysis. And this is really defined as the breakdown of glucose. So here we have a, have a couple cells. Let's have a molecule of G for glucose diffuse into the cell. Notice how the glucose is in the cytoplasm of the cell. The mitochondria is really important, but not until the later steps. So glycolysis occurs in the cytoplasm of cells. What we're gonna do is we're gonna zoom on into that top cell. And when we zoom into the top cell, we can see the molecule of glucose. 
Even though there is, the entire formula is C6, H12, O6, notice for simplicity, I've only drawn the six carbons arranged in a hexagon. In reality, there's 12 hydrogens and six oxygens, but just for simplicity, I've only drawn the, the ring there of the six carbons. Well, that glucose is gonna get broken down during glycolysis. And so what happens is there are enzymes in the cytoplasm of our cells that will break down this particular glucose here. And so if you've seen my other videos, you probably know I like to animate a pair of scissors as symbolic of glucose, or excuse me, as symbolic of enzymes, because enzymes tend to break down molecules. And so that's why I've chosen an, a pair of animated scissors here to represent enzymes. And so as the glucose is broken down, by the enzymes, the glucose has been broken into a couple fragments that are now called pyruvates. So you have two pyruvates, pyruvate one on the left, pyruvate two on the, on the right. Notice in the breakdown of glucose, two molecules of ATP are created. And so what happens next is those pyruvates, those broken fragments of glucose, we're not done breaking those down those two pyruvates will migrate into the mitochondria. And when they enter into the mitochondria, we're gonna move on into step two now of cellular respiration. So when we move on into stage two of the Krebs cycle, if we zoom on into that mitochondria, we can see that there's an inner layer in the darker color. This inner layer, by the way, goes by the name of the matrix. And in this darker inner layer, we can see the two pieces of the pyruvates, the, the what was once glucose, which has been broken apart. And so where does the Krebs cycle occur? It's in this inner mitochondrial layer here, again, called the matrix. And there's the two pyruvates. And so when we focus on what happens next, well, those pyruvates, which at one time were glucose, those pyruvates are gonna be broken down even further. And in order to do that, of course, we have to use enzymes. So in my animation, I've added my animated scissors, which are symbolic of enzymes. And what these enzymes are gonna do are break down the pyruvates even further. And when they do, molecules of ATP, some molecules of carbon dioxide and hydrogen ions are gonna be created. Now, in reality, the Krebs cycle is a pretty complex series of one reaction after another, after another, after another, after another, after another. In this simplified overview, I'm really just showing the main things that are created. So when I click the mouse again, a lot of things are gonna happen. Three, two, one. A lot is happening right now. Carbon dioxide is being created, CO2. Two molecules of ATP are created, and some hydrogen ions have moved into the outer membrane, the outer layer of the mitochondria, the lighter oranger color of the mitochondria. Again, in reality, the Krebs cycle is a pretty complex series of events. I'm just breaking it down to its simplicity right here. Well, notice again how all the hydrogens have accumulated in the uh, in the outer layer of the mitochondria, and all that carbon dioxide is then released, and, and that's partly what we exhale every time we inhale oxygen and exhale carbon dioxide from, uh, from cellular respiration. But notice again, two molecules of ATP have been created. Well, in stage one, in glycolysis, we also created two molecules of ATP. So stage one produced two, Stage two produced two, so so far we're up to four. Well, from the beginning of the video, we said 36 molecules of ATP are created, so the greatest amount must come next. And the final stage is the electron transport chain, and this is where we see the greatest amount of ATP produced. And this happens in the fluid within that orange layer of the mitochondria. And so what happens is the mitochondria is, uh, is aerobic, which means the mitochondria takes in oxygen. So this stage of cellular respiration requires O2, oxygen from the atmosphere. And again, uh, representing enzymes will be animated scissors. 
And so there's some animated scissors right there, symbolic of enzymes. And what the enzymes do, they bring together hydrogen, oxygen, ADP, and a phosphate. They bring all these together. And again, this is an overview, so I'm highly, highly simplifying the real electron transport chain. But if I just add a phosphate and an ADP, in the electron transport chain, the enzymes bring together the ADP, the phosphate, the oxygen, and the hydrogen, and through a pretty complex series of events, ATP gets created. Now this happens multiple times, so let me add another ADP and phosphate, and again, the enzymes will help to bring together the ADP, the phosphate, oxygens, and hydrogens, and create ATP. And let's do that one more time. So let's add another ADP and another phosphate. And the enzymes help bring together oxygen and hydrogen and ADP and P. And through a pretty complex chemical reaction, ATP gets created. And in reality, this happens again 32 times total. So when you add up the ATP from glycolysis, which was 2, plus the ATP from the Krebs cycle, which was 2, plus the ATP from the electron transport chain, which is 32, that single molecule of glucose that we began with has been used to produce 36 molecules of ATP. And so when we wrap up this video here, we can see our mitochondria taken in glucose and releasing a whole bunch of ATP. This ATP is then used by cells in order for them to do their work. So if you're in my class, maybe pause the video, try answering these questions, and I'm happy to check your answers before or after school one day. I hope you found this overview to be helpful. If you'd like uh, to learn some more of the details of cellular respiration, make sure you check out the, the description box uh, below the video. Thank you.